Hello, my name is Chaitanya and I'm the product manager for Oracle Apex. In Apex 20.2, web source modules are named REST data sources. Starting Apex 20.2, you don't need to take the pains of using custom PLSQL code in order to copy data from external REST services to local tables. Today, I'm going to show you how Apex declaratively supports data synchronization from a REST data source to a local table. Starting release 20.2, Apex invokes the REST service defined in the REST data source, downloads all data, and synchronizes to a local table. Apex can create the local table based on the columns defined in the REST data source's data profile. As the table is physically available in your database schema, you can add indexes, change physical properties, or even add more columns. Apex components such as reports and charts will be able to use this synchronized local table instead of invoking the actual REST service request. For this demo, I'm going to use the USGS Earthquakes REST API. So clicking all earthquakes and then I copy the REST API link. Then I navigate to my workspace on apex.oracle.com. I already have an application created over here. So I'm just clicking this application name. And then the next thing that I would do is go to shared components. Under shared components, data sources, I say rest data sources. So I click this one and then I click create. I would like to create rest data source from scratch. So hit next. And I would choose rest data source type to be simple HTTPP and just give it a name as usgs for example and then now paste the url endpoint here and then hit next now i see the base url and the service url path a new remote server will be created for me so clicking next this doesn't require any authentication so i'm just clicking discover now i would like to take a quick review of the data profile and then i will click create REST data source. The REST data source is created for me and I see it here under shared components REST data sources USGS. Now the next thing that I would do is go to my application and then I create an interactive report. So I would go to create page wizard and then click report and then select interactive report and then give it a name as USGS and then click next. Now we choose create a new navigation menu entry and then click next. Now here for data source, I would pick REST data source. And then I see under REST data source, USGS is listed already. So I select this one and then click create. Now save and run the page and log in using your workspace, username and password. Now this particular interactive report displays data from the past one hour. Apex allows you to do three different types of synchronization, append, merge, and replace. In this demo, we're gonna do the merge synchronization type. If you are choosing to merge data every time it is synchronized, it is important to first make sure the data profile has the primary key defined. So let's go to the application shared components. And then let's go to REST data sources, click USGS, and then click edit data profile. You see IT column here, so edit the column, and then turn on the primary key switch and say apply changes. Now you want to define the data synchronization, so let's go to USGS, and then click manage synchronization that you'd see to the right side of the page. Synchronization is not configured yet and you need to provide the name of a new table or an existing table to begin with. So let's select new table and then give a table name for example USGS local and then click save. The table does not yet exist and you see show SQL button here so let's click show SQL and it displays the table definition. You can save this SQL as a supporting object. So click save as supporting object and then give it a name and then click save script. Then you click apply changes and then click create table. You see the message, the table USGS local is ready for synchronization. 
the synchronization table exists and it matches the data profile. You can view the table in SQL Workshop. So let's go to SQL Workshop and then click data. You don't see any data yet. So let's go back to the synchronization piece again. Now let's specify a synchronization type. Let's click merge. You can define a synchronization schedule now. You can use the database scheduler calendar in syntax to define repeating synchronization schedules. Let's click the interval builder to specify a simple scheduler expression. You can choose a frequency of weekly, daily, hourly or minutely and let's click minutely now and then specify this as 15 minutes and then set execution interval. So the synchronization schedule is set now and let's trigger the synchronization. Let's click save and run. Change supply, data synchronization triggered. Let's reload the page. Let's click log. And then you see that six rows have been fetched. So let's click view HTTP log. And you see the HTTP request details here. Notice that the next synchronization is scheduled for 18 minutes from now. Now let's go to SQL Workshop to view the table if the data exists. So let's click SQL Workshop and then view the USGS local table. Let's click data. You now see that the table has been populated with data. So let's click dependencies. And now you see under REST synchronizations, app ID, app name, REST data source, and then the next synchronization details, etc. The synchronizations are kicked off by the coordinated job every 10 minutes starting at the top of the hour. So the actual execution timestamp of a synchronization can be up to a few minutes after the scheduled timestamp. Now let's navigate to the USGS interactive report page. And then in the developer toolbar, Let's click edit page 2. Now that the local synchronized table is available, the interactive report can use it as a data source instead of invoking REST service directly to fetch data. So under rendering, I'm selecting the region and in the property editor, right now you see REST source USGS as the data source. Underneath that, you see use synchronization table. So turning on the use synchronization table and then save and run the page. Now the interactive report is using the local synchronized table instead of using the external REST service. Now you can also view the synchronization usage. So let's go back to the shared components again. And then let's go to REST data sources. Click USGS and then click manage synchronization and now you see the log has a couple of entries already click show all and then click synchronization usage under details this particular report shows the application components that use the local synchronization table as a data source now in this case the report shows USGS interactive report which uses the local synchronized table in this video, you learn how to synchronize data from REST services to local table in Apex 20.2. Thank you for watching this video.